so hi friends so we'll start the webinar now so uh, first of all i would like to congratulate all of you uh, for like competing with lakhs of students across the country in very competitive exams be it like cat or xat or snap or nmat and so on and you have been successfully able to clear one step and got calls from b schools so now you are just one step behind the final destination so you just need to take care that obviously you all, all know that it's a, a bit tough step compared to the previous one because the competition becomes more and more tougher so i hope uh, we would be able to help you out uh, especially from starting from this session and we'll move ahead as well in future so yeah so this is gd uh, like we are a team of people from i am and bits pilani so we have started this uh, thing gt cube uh, get to the top so we are trying our uh, best to help the aspirants to reach their heights in their career so as of now we are focusing more on this uh, gd bat preparation and slowly we'll move into cat and other stuff as well the reason why we have started with this is uh, we are people who have been in your place few years back so just that we had luckily good mentors and guides who helped us to uh, crack the interviews so we have been able to crack and then got into iams then we have studied so that's the point so we hope that we also would be able to help you people and do in a better way so moving ahead so this is the agenda of the today's session so first i will talk briefly about some myth busters uh, about gd vat and pi process some individual related things related to pi or gd we will talk in the uh, corresponding uh, discussion but uh, this myth busters is as a whole for this process so i hope it would help you and motivate uh, once we clear this stage then we will talk about gd process some brief idea about gd and then some do's and don'ts which would help you to do better and obviously a preparation tips uh, which would help you to be better prepared for the gd and similarly we will do something similar for vat process as well uh, same description about the vat and then do's and don'ts for that and then uh, preparation tips to perform better and then we move ahead to the big thing the pi highest weightage most important thing in an uh, interview in a school b school conversion i would say so we will briefly talk about process then what exactly does a panel look uh, in you look for a, in a candidate and then basic do's and don'ts in an interview we'll move ahead to some possible questions in pi some standard set of questions and brief uh, some outliers as well to so just give a flavor of how exactly are the pi questions going to be and then we'll end it with a q and a session where i'll take up your questions so and i i would try my best to help you out so just moving uh, just before moving into the session i would just like to say that uh, so if when i am explaining something uh, in the process of explaining any of these and you have any doubts or any concerns about that just post it in the chat uh, i would look into that and if i feel that the time is right for me to discuss it at that point maybe i'll go ahead and discuss if not if i feel that maybe uh, it's a bit too specific or maybe it would be better handled in the end or maybe i would be covering it in the later so there is no point of talking at that point so i will not cover it so just keep in mind that if i am not answering that it means that uh, it's like left for the end so just post that question again in the end and i will definitely answer that part so just moving ahead so starting with the mythbusters part so i know quite a few of you who have who will fall actually in maybe one or more than one of these uh, categories so you would have been successfully cleared the cat so there is a wide range of cat percentiles who would be through to the interview stage so there is a good chance that you might be in the bottom half or maybe even at the bottom of the pyramid uh, regarding the cat percentile so the general perception for the people the aspirants and the others as well is like it's very tough you have somehow scraped through the percentile score and you have almost a very less chance to convert your call so it's like highly improbable or maybe like it's you are already giving it up now uh, i i would suggest that it's not true i agree that it is a disadvantage to some extent but it is not true to the extent where uh, people actually are, are like behave like it's hopeless i would just give a small example in the subsequent slide which i think would give you a better idea then moving ahead uh, fresher or higher work experience i think uh, quite a few of you uh, would fall in the fresher part uh, so the concern for freshers is like uh, i do not have work experience would this affect me would this affect me to get into a b school 
uh, I agree. Like uh, quite a few B schools are actually moving towards helping, focusing more on the work experience part. Uh, we are the Indian B schools are replicating the successful Indian things, uh, sorry US uh, things uh, like be it Harvard, Stanford, where the average age would be 27, 28, and having a work experience of five years, six years. So e- even we are moving. But the point, the thing should be noted is. There are good chunk of freshers in every top B school in the country. In any of the IIMs, I think it would be at least some 20 to 25, 20 percent of uh, people would be freshers. So it's not that you can make it. Okay, so you have a good chance. Just that it's a perception. I agree that again, like you might lose the work experience points which they do give in the final criteria, maybe few points. Then to the other extreme, that is high work experience. So people who have a very high experience might feel that it's lost cause uh, they have a very tough chance to convert. But believe me, I have seen people who had work experience of 15 years, 8 years, 7 years who have made into IIMs in PGP course, the 2 years course, not an executive MBA for year. So it's not that having high work experience will affect your chance. So it is nothing wrong uh, in having high work experience. So, but you just need to justify why you are not going for an executive MBA and two years MBA. Why you are preferring a two years MBA? Then moving ahead, uh, the general engineer male category, uh, where most of the people do fall. Uh, so people do feel that no, the the things in IIMs and other colleges have moved to get more diverse people, be it in gender perspective or academic perspective. So in that aspect, people might feel that uh, they have a less chance to make it. But as you all know, the whole country is flooded with these gems and I would suggest that uh, don't think that you have less chance in any way. Uh, you Obviously, the good chunk of people in B-School do belong to this category because the most of the candidates in the country are like belong to this thing. So you are along with the rest of the country. So I would suggest whoever fall in this category to not give up. And then finally, low academics part. So maybe in 10th, 12th. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, just hold on. Uh, uh, I would just like to say that the slides would be given to all the participants uh, in the end of the session. Maybe we'll, we'll receive in a mail. So if, if any of you people are facing still issue with the audio part, I would suggest first to log out and then reconnect again. Uh, if still it's not working, maybe you can cut off your video. Um, maybe if your bandwidth is not good enough, maybe you can try to just focus all your bandwidth on this laptop itself, I mean your desktop or laptop, try to uh, remove connections from your mobiles and other stuff so that you'll be able to provide a good bandwidth for this. So then moving ahead, the low academics part as I was talking about, so you might fall in any of these categories having less academic tense towards a grad, so it might look like uh, it's not, it, it will affect your chance of converting. Again, I would say they have some weightage for that, but it's not going to be a game changer. So I would just show you one example which I hope would give you a good perspective on like what exactly I'm like trying to convey to you all people. So just I have taken it uh, this from IMC admission final admission criteria for this year. So if you look at this, a CAT 2014 score has 35% weightage, a personal interview has 44% weightage, and a VAT is having 10% weightage. So I was as I was talking about the diversity part where you might lose this two on one and then work experience of eight points. So I would just focus on the CAT score for now. So people feel that having a less CAT CAT percentile might affect their chance in a very bad manner. So just I have taken this uh, from a source uh, Olive Board where they have just given the percentiles and corresponding scale scores for this year. So I have just taken it from this uh, 99.9. The score is 230 out of 300 and the scale score is 26.833. And for 99.5 is 24.15. And for 99 and 95, the the thing values are given. So if you just look at uh, the difference between a 99.9 and 99.5, after scaling down, it would come to something around 2.6 or something. So this, I agree, is a big score. But the point is, it's only out of 35. You have still 54 uh, marks, which you can, 54 points, which you can actually score through your interview and bad process, which is much, much more than what you have lost. So what I'm saying is the game is not done. It's not even halfway. You have more than half of the game to be played. So what I'm saying is you might be a step or two steps behind the other people, but it's not tough to catch them. So the reason why you got a call in these schools is just because maybe you might have fallen in any of the baskets, less in any of the baskets, but you would have done better in the other baskets, which would have made you to get the call. 
so i would suggest you please do not impose any restrictions on yourself saying that i have no cat score and no uh, academics or maybe less work experience uh, please overcome them there is no point of fighting a fight when you do not believe in yourself it's like you already given it up and i don't think uh, you will achieve anything more than uh, thing i don't think you will reach the end point the success point so i would suggest first keep those things completely out of your mind be confident that you will be able to crack it it's fine like in any of the game be it football or cricket you might be at at particular point of game you might be a step behind the opponent but it doesn't mean that you can't win the game so it's as simple as that which i'm trying to convey over here as well so so moving ahead uh, which i hope that you all people have got enough motivation and are have are believing in yourself that you would be able to crack it so we'll move ahead in the discussion so first we'll talk about the gd process so a simple one it's a discussion among 8 to 12 people so a topic would be given on the spot uh, impromptu by the panel then you will be given 2 to 3 minutes of time to think put your thoughts and then you will be asked to start then in the end you might be asked to conclude or summarize so there are quite different types of gds you would see in different b schools uh first i'll talk about these like in an iift for example they would give a topic would give you some time 2 to 3 minutes then they will ask everyone in an order to actually introduce the topic uh okay so the the, the question which people have is like uh i'll answer that and so please do not uh, make make sure that you actually utilize those 2 to 3 minutes properly so that you would perform better in the gd rather than trying to actually start fast so in a way it might look like it might go bad or might be that you might have the advantage of starting first so we'll talk about that later so moving continuing on this part so in an iift gd you will be given chance to actually talk uh, in an order introduce the topic then uh, the whole open forum will be there so where everyone can discuss in the end again everyone will get the chance to conclude the topic summarize or conclude the topic so this is the, like a bet- best thing i think you will see in a gd but most of the gds in iims and other b schools will generally be an open forum right from the start and no one would get a chance uh, you, because of panel asking you to talk or something that rarely happens and if a panel actually points you out and asks you to summarize uh, in the middle of a gd asks you to talk it means that you are performing very bad in the gd so that's why the panel felt that you sh- he should give you a chance so just try to keep that in mind so the topic that could be asked in a gd uh, can be categorized in these things so it could be current affairs related topics maybe to- gd topic on make in india uh, should it be implemented or not or how advantages and disadvantages stuff like that maybe planning commission which is uh, scrapped by narendra modi so affects uh, like what are the effects of that and stuff then it could be an abstract topic uh, be like the sky is black uh, men are from uh, mars and women are from venus like these topics you should keep in mind that you should show your creativity in this so when the whole group is discussing on something i would suggest you when you are think, taking your time to think down i uh, think uh, the 2 to 3 minutes just try to think as many diverse points as you can do not just try to dive deep into each point try to think in different dimensions and keep them uh, ready with you because the whole group is discussing in one or two points if you just pitch in and try to get a different dimension that's where you actually score and you uh, cut ahead of the others so again moving ahead to the classic and general topic uh, these are the ones which are uh, like uh, persistent persisting problems pertaining problems which you would be seeing in the society it could be uh, health issues poverty or uh, inflation and stuff which can are a topic to be discussed throughout the at any point of time in life so i mean like in any year what exactly i mean so then we will move ahead uh, the case based discussion which is there for few colleges uh, like nasi monji etc where you will be given a page of case you uh, will be given some time you need to read the case uh, it would be generally a business case uh, and corresponding maybe it could be re- linked with some ethical issues or it could be maybe some normal business uh, completely related to business aspect or something so you need to read the case the first thing you need to understand is what is the problem being posed in the case so why exactly the whole discussion should happen so what is the key thing uh, which is hidden in the 
case if you do not get that correct i think the whole discussion on the points which you try to make would go outward rather than actually being more helpful for the discussion so just try to understand that and then next try to see the stakeholders who exactly are going to get affected with whatever the things you can do depending on that uh, you can continue ahead with the discussion so we'll just move ahead to the do's and don'ts in a gd so first thing write down your ideas in a sheet of paper so when i said that you have 2 to 3 minutes of time please understand that that is the most valuable time you can get in a gd okay so please do not try, try to the, the reason why i am saying is uh, in a gd you would be multitasking already like you have to wait for your chance to like speak it's not so easy for the, like it's not like you will be given a, a chance to speak it's like you have to grab the chance to speak so you will be already focusing on that aspect where like you would be looking to look for a pass and just pounce upon it simultaneously you should also listen to what others are speaking because uh, if you can counter some points with some good arguments that would fetch you a good point so you should be listening to them so you are already listening and trying to generate some points and then you are also trying to uh can we write okay so then you should just try to actually uh, focus on uh, sorry uh, so you should you will also look, focus on pouncing upon uh, to speak so if you do not utilize this two to three minutes properly you will not have good ideas left in your pocket to discuss in the gd like i would say on the top of the mind most of the students do get a very similar ideas so if you are not able to speak early like it might be chance that you will lose out uh, all your points and like you might not get a chance so the reason why i am saying so please write down your ideas different types of I different ideas in a different dimensions uh, so that you can actually utilize that properly in the discussion and again i am repeating this ppt will be shared to the attendees so don't worry about that so don't make any notes if you are so worried about that you will be getting the ppt anyways um and moving ahead uh, yeah do not yeah so i will just continue about the ideas in a sheet part so when you are writing down the ideas uh, just write down very briefly like suppose we are, the topic is on make in india so the thing you can write is like when you make in india it's like your exports will go down and your sorry, imports will go down and exports will go up so don't write that in your sheet don't write that okay the exports will go up and then imports will go down which would be a good thing for india where the balance of payment uh, would be more favorable of this rather than that simply write ex up arrow and then im down arrow that's it that should be enough for you to actually understand when you are doing in a gd you should be prepared for these kind of things short notes thing so that you actually do not waste time in writing down the points in a sheet of paper then moving ahead do not stick to one side right from the start this is one thing which i i feel in quite a few participants who do take part in gds that right from the start they will say that i think this should be done or i think this should not be done like it, it sounds as if like you are biased right from the start the point of having a discussion is to actually contribute the point from different uh, perspectives and dimensions and trying to actually reach a good consensus so you should not be like looking like a biased guy right from the start i am not saying you should not talk from one side but uh, you should be like you can be talking like uh, i think this is a good thing because these these things will happen but do not say that i think this is the only good thing and this should be done so this is not something which would go well in the uh, with the panel so uh, what i'm trying to say is so be open uh, whenever you can pitch in pitch in on the both sides of the topic maybe you can support suppose a make in india yes i support that uh, i would generate more jobs in our country it's a good argument in favor of that maybe on the opposite side maybe you can uh, talk about the other point saying that maybe because of uh, which uh, for when you have making the thing in country maybe the pollution would go up in the country we are already are facing the issues so environmental issues are there with the industry so you can talk with a different uh, perspective you can talk from the both the sides in a single gd there's nothing wrong in that in the end you can say that after weighing uh, outweighing both positives and negatives i think that we can go with this or that that is fine in the end you can uh, do that so no issues about that the so next uh, try to speak first so this i would say is a good thing if you can do it uh, you'll fairly perform well i mean it, it would go well with the panel uh, you'll definitely get brownie points but there is a downside to it as well what i'm saying is 
if you do not chart the topic properly then there is a good chance that you will go uh, in a negative way i mean the panel would not uh, look at you in a positive side for at least for some more time so when you are introducing the topic you should be very confident that you can speak well for one minute maybe 30 40 seconds you introduce the topic properly so i would like to say that uh, speaking first is potentially a rewarding thing as well as potentially can uh, damage your chances so it's a double edged sword so please utilize it very carefully you just don't try to always chip in first so it depends on your strengths and how comfortable you are with the topic so moving ahead so this is the golden rule which i would say to every participant every uh, candidate uh, whom i know like you have to make a point in a gd in the first 4 minutes if the gd is such a 10 to 15 minutes and you do not make a point in the first 4 minutes i would say that like you are like non existent in the gd the panel would not even remember that there is a candidate sitting there trying to pitch in something so i would say it might not go well this should be the rule which is your top priority uh, maybe you are like not having a proper idea on the topic maybe you are not clear what to talk maybe you do not have a proper point maybe the point which you want to talk is already taken by someone else but still still you pitch in some point even though it doesn't it's not of a high quality or good quality just make sure that it's not very very bad uh, just try to pitch something in the first four minutes it shows that you are at least trying to take it initiate i mean you are trying to participate in the group discussion like if you don't even do that it looks like this guy is not able to do it or maybe he's not interested so that both of them would not go good for you then the other thing is support your argument with stats and uh, reasoning so factual data and reasoning so so what i would suggest is uh, whenever you are speaking whenever you are speaking in a gd or in interview or any vat just do not do not talk just based on your likes or dislikes like so if something topic is based on narendra modi do not say that uh, yeah narendra modi is a good leader because uh, i like him he's a good leader uh, he has good leadership qualities uh, these looks like uh, very what you call it uh, personal biases thing yeah you will have everyone will have their own opinion but i'm saying is you have to support that using some factual data maybe you can say that the growth rate in the gujarat has been this maybe uh, you can talk about something like the manufacturing industry how it has grown in gujarat so the labor the the labor uh, the, the reforms done in the labor field where it has actually made it easy for the businesses to enter so all these things could be substantiated saying that he is a leader a good leader in this aspect or that aspect so these things are better than just saying that uh, uh, i like him he is a good leader and stuff like that so i hope you are getting the point so whenever you are preparing you have to have a good set of your stats and factual data be it about the gdp growth rate or be it about uh, the the split of gdp in terms of service sector manufacturing industry and uh, sir, uh, your agriculture workforce involved inflation rate cpi wpi you have whole lot of things which you should having a good knowledge about which i am very sure your competitors the other candidates would come prepared so you should not lag behind that part so next uh, bring diverse points to the discussion so uh, as what i have been telling right from the start so when your uh, whole discussion is going in one direction if you can get a new point that would definitely fetch you good points and behave properly with others in the gd this is one important point so please try to understand that uh, the things which they look in a gd is your communication skills your ability to think through the topic and argue in a proper manner and at the same time how you behave in a group how you actually uh, because this is a very important thing as you become a manager so they look at that aspect uh, very carefully so you should make sure that you give others chance and listen to them uh, when you are speaking look at all the people in the group okay don't look at the panelists or anyone else look at all the people in the group and when someone is speaking you look at him or her so don't just uh, look at somewhere then when uh, do not sound arrogant when you are talking assertiveness is what is good but not arrogance so there's a very fine line of difference between these two i hope uh, you will make i mean look, it's not so easy to differentiate both but make sure that maybe it's nothing bad to actually be less assertive rather than trying to be more assertive and it might cross it and go into arrogant level so it's better to be on this aspect on this side of spectrum being a bit less assertive
and then uh, do not cut down others and do not get into personal fights please like this is a very common thing that happens that some people do personally take it maybe you are countering someone's point maybe he takes it personally and then he start one on one conversation with you so you not look at others he will try to just uh, justify his own point he will try to talk to you in a so what i am trying to say is okay listen to that and then the next point you should make should be a different thing or maybe to the whole group do not you also do not get offended uh, do not get offended and just try to make it even more personal so that would not go good for either of you which would affect your chances and if someone else is doing that you are not involved in the fight some two people in a group discussion are fighting so just hold for some time if the, still the fight is going on i mean the people are continuously talking to each other and you people are not getting the chance i would suggest cut them there is no problem cut them and say that uh, we understand what you are trying to say uh, but i think we should also focus on the other aspects and let's continue with the discussion and then you pitch in some point or maybe you stop there and someone else will pick it up so please do not let this happen if this happens the whole group also loses because you are losing a chance to speak that those people are fighting which anyway will go negative for them and you people are not getting a chance to speak so the panel do not have enough uh what uh chance to actually give you better point marks so yeah so again show your seriousness and interest to the panel do not play with your pen or cap or with your dress or anything in your vicinity i would say just concentrate on the group discussion do not look at your watch or something else looking at watch to just check what's the how long the duration the discussion has been happening these are fine but just focus on the group and like listen to who is speaking that shows your seriousness and interest otherwise the panel might feel that this guy is not interested and please do not give weird expressions when someone is speaking it might look like a very very for you it might look like a blunder like what the hell is he speaking it's fine but still please do not show it in your face so evidently you just take your time and politely go and say that i think what you're trying to say might be this and maybe uh, i might not agree with your point what i personally feel is this 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 that's fine do not say that you are wrong you are incorrect i do not give some weird expressions on your face like what is he talking man like please do not do that then forget about the panelists but keep in mind that the panelists are present in the room so what i'm trying to say is do not look at the panelists at any point of time in a discussion let them do whatever they want it's not your duty it's up to them to do what they want i agree it might affect your chance but it's not in your hands so they might be chit chatting they might be discussing about the whole group's behavior or they might not look like interested they could be someone some panelist could be looking at some there might be is not interested so but you can't do anything about that it's like that beyond your control so please do not get distracted from these things just participate in the group discussion that's the best thing you can do and mind that panelists are present in the room the reason why i'm saying this is you have to understand that there are eyes watching you carefully every movement of yours is being watched so keep in mind that panelists are present in the room so that you behave politely and perform better and then no over smartness so what i mean by this is uh, like i have seen quite a few uh, times people do this like they try to show their leadership skills or initiative taking skills in the gd evidently uh like they say i think this guy hasn't uh, i i think this guy wants to pitch something let him talk or uh, something like that so they'll try to show to the group uh, panel actually that uh, th- this guy actually is more like a leader is trying to give chance to others and stuff which is a good thing if you ask me but the point is it has gone to that extent in the recent times that the panelists themselves understood the reason why the people are doing it and i'm saying it uh, frankly that i talked to many of the im faculty when i was uh in the college so like they themselves said to me when i was talking about this point that uh, i we can understand it clearly why why a person is doing that so please do not do that just because there could be chance that that guy is not actually having a point to talk maybe that's the reason why he is not talking maybe he is not interested so why do you want him to involve like get him involved and like he might be embarrassed and you might also be face the same such condition so please do not do that but at the same time step in during chaos so there could be a chance where the whole group is in a chaos like everyone is discussing everyone is like fighting and trying to put their points and no one is like able to understand what's happening so this is something which you have to try to take control because the reason why i'm saying is there are many cases n number of cases where the whole group got checked just because of the chaos created in the gd uh, look i am from another college right now do not have that uh, 
like they not check the groups and like they not cut them from sitting an interview but at least you would be getting very very less marks in a gd so when you are so bothered about having two marks last in a in the cat score as i was comparing their two marks are three marks you might lose much more than that out of 10 in a group discussion if you do not actually do well in this so because some people are not doing correctly it might affect your chance as well and others as well so that's not a fair thing to happen so what i'm saying is so take the initiative over there you say that i think uh, we are actually getting distracted from the topic listen everyone please try to uh, do it in a much more organized manner we are not able to understand it or something i just try to increase your voice over there there's nothing wrong to be a bit a bit i'm not saying aggressive a bit aggressive trying to control the group that's where i would say you are become showing your leadership skills that is a fairly good thing but you have to handle it carefully uh, otherwise the reason why what i'm saying is the whole group would get checked off so it might affect your chance and other chance so then moving ahead to the preparation tips part uh, so i would suggest to first focus on the race, recent happenings in last 6 months to 1 year in the worst case at least prepare for the last 6 months uh, i would say after the narendra modi's government uh, what exactly have has happened in the country be it in terms of economy be it in terms of political it could be about obama's visit on in india so india's relationship with the international countries china japan russia usa it could be anything so political uh, economy environmental uh, business related obviously important economics so these all things are the things these are all the topics which you should be well aware of so the best thing is to be well aware of the last two years happenings at least moderately prepare for 6 months to 1 year depending on the availability of time start from trying to focus on the last 6 months and then move slowly to that 1 year and 2 years part so next prepare for the classic topics you never know so these are the classic topics you might get uh, something related to that so men versus women or terrorism so the recently the the fighting that has happened in pakistan the terrorist organization has actually killed so many school students school kids so that could be topic so even though that is a current happening but if you prepare for terrorism you have a good chance to actually pitch the point from maybe the past examples or data stuff like that so you can actually use that across the topics so i would like to just introduce a top approach uh, to all of you which i believe would definitely help you to do better in your gd and the vat as well so this is a called stakeholder approach so the basic idea is when you are given a topic identify the stakeholders stakeholders are people who have stakes in that i mean who get affected by something uh, if the, there is a change done in any of that they they would get affected for example i'll take a small example like say agriculture and subsidy should farmers be subsidized in india that suppose the topic is that so the first thing you should try to do is so okay who are the stakeholders one the farmers and their families to the government obviously they are giving the money for the subsidy part so the revenues of the government would go down and then public because they are the people who are paying the taxes which are again used for the subsidies rather than maybe utilizing it for some other useful activities and then in, depending on the subsidy uh, the government generally ties up with the local uh, say like uh, pump manufacturers and traders and stuff so you can also consider those people who would be getting business just because there is subsidy they are able to sell the pumps and other things to the farmers so these are three four and uh, things you can talk about you can actually dive deep and get better stakeholders as well but uh, just like i'm just giving an example so then you go into each stakeholder and look at what are the positives and negatives if we cut down our continue the subsidy so farmers are already uh, very less productive in our country so i would also just give continue with this example uh, to show how data can help you to actually put up a better point so india is a country where uh, 13 to 14% of the gdp is coming from agriculture uh and then 57% of the workforce is involved in agriculture so out of 100 every 100 people working in our country 57 people are working in agriculture sector but the gdp the output the which the country is able to produce in terms of dollars or rupees uh effective output i would say is only 13 to 14% of it is coming from agriculture so that shows how unproductive our agriculture sector is which is even in a small country like israel they have some 5 to 10 the productivity of their israel is 5 to 10 times uh, more than us usa is also highly productive that's because the adoption of technology and other things so that's where you can talk that maybe subsidy would help them to actually uh, adopt the latest technologies like pumps and other things and that even other tractors and maybe helpful things and that would help them to actually get a better output and productivity so the 
like people should move ahead and talk in these kind of things so who would get affected and who would positives and negatives so if you do these kind of thing if the whole group is discussing on say farmers and government and revenue maybe you can talk and pitch a new point of public being affected or maybe you can talk about point related to the local uh, traders and sellers of the farms and stuff who will get affected they might lose their business because the government is not providing any subsidy so these are the things which you should try to get into the discussion the different dimensions so which i was talking about so i think that is giving you a better idea how the stats of actual data would help you to perform better and how uh, examples are reasoning and added to that stakeholder approach so identify important topics and make notes for them putting up arguments for both sides this is like a pre session preparation like pre d day preparation uh, so what i am saying is identify the recent happenings and the important topics related to these categories and read do a secondary research in the internet read through google many articles written by highly uh, knowledge persons make the points in a sheet of paper important points which you think would definitely help you to talk better in a group discussion make notes of them and then you can just revise it a day before that or something like that and you would definitely definitely perform much better in a group discussion so read the newspapers regularly at least from now if you haven't done till now till now whatever you have missed out you should try to read it from different sources in the internet there is no fixed source for you to get the latest happenings in a very quick manner you have to ha- undergo the pain and you have to uh, read through it so we are trying to provide some better information regarding this part so mostly we will be able to help you out in coming days uh, to help you to be aware of the latest happenings and stuff like that so then also make note of factual data in the the notes you are making so that you will remember that and you would be able to pitch that better in the group discussion finally practice practice and practice nothing else can beat that believe me like i can speak to you for hours hundreds of hours and you could listen to me and everything looks like going in a good smooth manner but you would not be able to perform much much better than what you are currently if you do not practice so you might listen to these things and might perform slightly better these are just a thing which would give you direction so all we can do is to just help you out uh, and show the way at the end of the day it is you who has to walk and it is who who has to practice and perform better in the day so i would suggest you to practice practice and practice so practice with whom uh, with your co participants means your candidates who are also got to the b schools if you have any friends or people whom you know that would be the better thing that can happen maybe if not at least try to get hang of your friends uh, who have good knowledge about these happenings and maybe you can discuss with them the advantage are you learn to talk in a group discussion and get these things like uh, thinking the ideas in 2 to 3 minutes pitching the points and trying to pounce upon stuff like that and you will also learn good points from your part co participants it's like a co learning thing then moving ahead so the vat process uh, it's very similar to gd except that you have to write down so it's an essay basically so different schools like iims and other schools have different uh, length for an essay and duration so no one actually asks you to write these many words maybe you might have an upper limit so just in a just to give an estimation i would say 250 words as a, in a 20 minute duration is something you would generally see if you are asked to write in a 10 minutes it should be around some 150 130 150 words so topics again are similar to what i have discussed in the group discussion so it could be current affairs related abstract general topics or classic ones case based this i can give an example uh, based in i am ahmedabad so what they do is they would give you two cases Uh, hardly some seven eight lines of cases and they would ask you to write an essay for each essay as in like they'll ask a question in the end and you just need to justify your take on that with some explanations taken points taken from the case so that's it so how to go about it so again it's a very same thing which i would suggest take your time to note down the points in the beginning even if you get 10 minutes please do spend 2 minutes one and a half to two minutes to actually jot down the points the reason why i am saying is people feel that no we have to jump immediately and write the essay and like get it done uh, it's very important for us to not waste even a minute it's true to not waste a time uh, waste time but if you do not take your time to note down the points you will there's a very very good chance that one your essay will not be well organized two your essay might miss some good points three um, and there's a good chance that you might not be able you might get stuck somewhere in the middle so generally you will be given a 
space to do the rough work so you never have an issue regarding that in a gdr vat you will be given a sheet of paper white sheet of paper so to note down the points if you are not given a white sheet of paper generally you will be given space on the borders kind of thing which you can utilize on the back side of it so you will not have any issue with the space for jotting down some key points no don't worry about that part so then uh, so if you take the time for 2 minutes and actually get some arguments uh, like and go about the structure it would go in a very smooth manner for you in the rest of the thing and you would definitely give a better output for the better output so again use the stakeholder approach the same thing which i was explaining in the earlier case so depending on the topic identify the stakeholders see the effect uh, like positives and negatives how they are going to get affected so the structure uh, this is one the structure which i generally uh, suggest to the students so start with an introduction part so introduction part it's good to start with a quote quotation a proverb or a definition of some key terms related to the topic if the topic is on corruption maybe you can define corruption which is <coughs> <coughs> sorry uh, which is a good thing to do but if you do not know it it's fine so just try to introduce the topic in some simple terms then move ahead two to three arguments favoring one side so whatever the side uh, you want to take this this is one thing which i would like to say it depends on what is the conclusion you are trying to give so when you are jotting jotting down the point depending on how good your arguments are you might maybe you have perception of uh, maybe favoring something or not favoring something even if you actually outrightly favor something please do not forget about writing the opposite of it i mean the negatives of that write some weak one or two points about that and say that as uh, you can see the positives outweigh the negatives so because the the people who are affected and the the amount of the the amount by which they are getting affected is relatively good in the positive and comparatively less in the negative so that's why we can go with positive so something like that so but do not miss on not don't miss on writing the negative side so it shows that you are actually thinking from both the sides but you found the other side to be more favorable and that's why you have favored that that's fairly good enough you are like behaving logically but if you just write on one side it shows that you are unidimensional and you have only single perspective you do not think from other side of a topic so this is the format so write two to three arguments favoring one side of the discussion generally that would be obviously the one which you would be writing favorably in and that i suggest to go with this then one to two points favoring the opposite side but if you feel that you actually have a good a uh, weight you know, both sides are like neutral you want to be neutral uh, you finding both the points are looking to be equally good then it's fine you can just write in the end itself so it looks like uh, we can't have a clear winner in this so i would be neutral so it's fine to conclude in that way there's nothing like there's no rule to say that you have to stand on one side yeah so this i i agree uh, what the idea uh, what uh, abhinav mean, was talking like this is a structure which i'm giving you for generally topics which where you can argue but when you have something like an abstract topic the thing which you should do the, this structure would not work out thanks for pointing out what i know i have actually missed this out uh, you should actually try to bring different dimensions so as i am talking one paragraph after the intro part maybe at the end of intro you can say that see you can interpret this particular topic in this manner and this manner and the first pair the second paragraph after the first after the intro part so that is the second paragraph you could elaborate one perspective then maybe you can move ahead and elaborate another perspective and obviously you won't have a proper conclusion for an abstract topic you can just keep it saying that so these are the different ways where one can actually interpret uh, this topic so that's fairly good so where you don't have any arguments in this as in this part so you'll just go ahead and try to get a different uh, interpretations of the same topic that is something which you do in this in an abstract topic uh, this structure would be for a topic where you can actually argue and say favorable or unfavorable kind of thing so uh, then do's and don'ts do not jump into writing from the start what i've said quotations definitions in the intro part good to use but not a mandatory thing use examples and factual data which again i have talked about in the group discussion it's always always good to justify your arguments using good examples or uh, factual data so then moving to the do not use quotation proverbs if you are not sure it's good to use the quotations and proverbs but if you are not so sure of it there's a good chance that the person the panelist who's correcting it knows that i mean the notes the quotation are proverb and it might not go well for you so there is like there is no rule 
saying that you have to start with the proper quotation if you're not getting it don't waste your time thinking on something to start very creatively because even though if you start writing very creatively in the first paragraph if you lose the time uh then you might not uh perform like you might complete the vat actually in the end so do not get stuck at this point and make sure that you complete the vat this is the very very important rule which you should keep in your mind irrespective of how quality your vat is still the point where you have written but you couldn't complete it that would definitely not fetch you the best marks that would definitely cut down maybe two or three marks out of your 10 so what i would suggest is please try to get a balance between quality and the time so it might be that you are like you, put, you can write like a shakespeare or someone if you have enough time maybe say rather than 10 minutes maybe 20 30 minutes but the point is you are not given that time so you have to understand that and appreciate the fact and try to be a bit little less maybe an indian or someone like an indian author and do it something like somehow manage to complete in time and we are decently you have done a good job that's fair enough you don't need to give the best that's the best thing you can do with your in your time limits so for that you just need to practice uh, which i'll talk uh, maintain poise to not on the topic so please as i said think on both the sides and do not like sound right from the start that you are biased on something and like you go against against it or maybe you go only favorable of something 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 so then do not get personal in the vat and look unbiased so it might be suppose the topic could be something like women managers are better than male so that could be potentially a topic which has appeared in quite a few uh bad and series so if you are a guy maybe you feel that no it's not because you being maybe you are personally biased to that part that no i don't think so but the point is when you are talking that please do not get your personal biases uh, into the thing so justify it proper examples and factual data saying that maybe a company has done a research maybe a university has done a research and they have actually studied the top management uh, people across the top some 50 co in, uh, companies in the somewhere and then they found out that there is no difference in performance between a male and female manager so that could be fairly a good start to justify that so there is no difference so something like that would actually be a better logic maybe you can give some simple examples rather than actually trying to be saying no no there is no difference or maybe no male is better than female so please do not do these kind of stereotypical or uh, biased opinions that would not at all go well in these kind of things especially so then uh prepare for the current the, the preparation tips would stay the same uh the same i have suggested for the gd generally in quite a few colleges like i am koji code and i am lucknow and other colleges they give the same topic for vat and gd so you will be given 10 15 minutes you make vat then you will be asked you'll, they'll collect the papers and then you'll be asked to start discussing so in this manner so the topic is same some people like IFT and uh, uh, other colleges will give you two different topics for both. So it's fine. But still the potential topics are same for both. So just make sure that uh, you keep that in mind. So the preparation would be again same. The current happenings and the classic topics. Utilizing a stakeholder approach. Uh, important topics and making notes to put arguments from both the sides. Newspapers regularly. Practice and practice. So the thing, the, the way I would suggest to combine both GD and VAT preparation is take some topics list out the topics take a topic maybe two topics a day read through in the internet search it read for maybe one one and a half hours both the topics together maybe 40 45 for each then close everything take your time and write down a page uh, a page of an vat so basically the vat of say 250 300 words on the topic so in this manner you would be obviously taking in a way taking the notes as if just read it you would not miss out the facts and other important points you will be noting down in a sheet of paper and you will also have the practice of writing a VAT with the time limit. So with this, you would definitely improve yourself over a period of time. See, there is a good chance that you would not be able to complete VAT in the given time. So please practice it properly to make sure that you are at a good pace. You are writing at a good pace. I know quite a few would have worked, maybe you would have lost touch with writing at the pace which is required for this. So you can just imagine writing 120, 150 words in a 10 minutes. It's not so easy. So just you have to think as well, right? So that's why just make sure that you arrange the time properly and do it correctly. Then we'll move ahead and talk about the PI process. The important thing, the, the big one. So basically it's an interview taken by a panel of two to four profs or alumni. So highest weightage in the process. Goes for 10 minutes to one hour. So generally 15 to 20 minutes. The thing I would say is 
there is no nothing like you can't say that an interview going for 10 minutes is bad or one, going for 1 hour is good or something like that there are cases where i have seen people have just had interview for less than 10 minutes and made it to iim excel or afm or another top school and at the same time there are cases where people had undergone an interview for 1 hour and they didn't make it at the same time vice versa there are people who had they had people who had interview for less than 10 minutes and they couldn't make it people who had for 1 hour got grilled completely came out of it completely demotivated but still they made it so you can judge something like uh, on the base of duration but what i'm trying to say is be prepared for a one hour interview as well so generally it would be less than 30 minutes so maybe 15 to 25 so you need to have that patience and uh, the like you have to handle the stress for that amount of time so please understand that so then the interview could ask questions the interviewers could ask questions related to personal career academics and anything under the sun you will i will justify this once we move ahead to the possible pi questions so but please keep this in the mind that the interviewers can ask you anything under the sun and you don't have any chance to justify that uh, that said i don't that that's not relevant for um, like you to ask me at for this mba interview so questions depends on b school and more importantly panelists so you can judge you can decide that okay these set of questions will be asked for me in a particular b school generally on the basis of past experiences people would have some perception like say for example i am calcutta is known for its quant questions like they generally pose a lot of uh, integration calculus maybe a probability statistics questions in an interview so it's known and i would say like you can take that they are definitely going to ask you so be prepared for that but it doesn't mean that everyone will get it so it completely depend on the panelists and the other i am and other b schools also can ask you there is nothing to say that no no only these people will ask these and these people will not ask that be prepared for anything as i said anything under the sun uh so what do they look at so in a pi so first thing they want to know you better and see if you fit in their b school and also in industry in the future so basically nowadays the trend has been that b schools are trying to make sure that people are actually uh, have a potential are potential candidates to get placed in future and perform well in the industry so they look at the value you can add to the batch and b school so what value you can add in terms of diversity in terms of experience and stuff so because the you know, b school peer to peer learning is very important it's equally it's equally important as a faculty what faculty teaches in every b school you have this like case study discussions and stuff where you people have to come prepared and participate so it's completely like how good your batch is and how good they are helping you or think in a different direction are the things which would definitely help your learning curve so then analytical skills which partially are already checked in your uh, aptitude test through cat and other that etc but they will still uh, look at that in a different math beat puzzles and other possible varieties and ability to cope in stressful conditions so b school life is indeed stressful believe me uh, so i myself had a time where we had six quizzes on a particular day we had a presentation we had a assignment submission in the night 12 o'clock and then we had a presentation the next day so this is obviously in a worst like one which tends to the worst condition but generally you are in the b school life is very stressful where people are highly expected to work hard the load would be at a different level compared to an undergrad level even compared to work work life maybe unless until you come from some finance background or something i would generally consulting or something i would generally say it uh, high on a high level competitive work like so they'll just check if you are able to handle in a stressful condition the point is basically once you get out of b school the work life would be like that if you look into a finance company an investment banking or consulting in a top things you have to work an average of 16 to 18 hours that's what they expect you to work for so i think that so it's justify like you have to undergo stress over there so if you can't handle it then there is no point for you to do an mba so that's why you are not suitable for a b school so they look at that part are you able to handle the stress ability to learn from your past so this is one thing which uh, is done very frequently in interviews like they will check out uh, the things of done your past and what have you learned from that and what are you doing now this would give them a brief idea about what you will potentially be doing in the future so like learn what did you learn from your mistakes and stuff like that are the questions which they ask you to actually understand these parts arrogance car carelessness please sorry you can go back they don't even like want to see these kind of people so approachable calm 
appreciate it so please try to portray these things in an interview you should sound like an approachable guy you should sound to be cool guy calm guy you should not look like someone who is careless and maybe arrogant it's not like you feel that i have achieved these things these things in my life so i deserve to be here you have to say those things but it should it should be said in a different manner if you say that sir i am good so you should not sound as if like i am the only one who is good so i think you understood understood the point so uh do not do some don'ts in a pa so dress appropriately so this is one two words where actually actually uh, i might can spend even potentially an hour to explain these things so but i would just try to cut it down in two to three minutes so basically for guys it suit our formal wear like you can wear suit or not blazer or suit it's not a mandatory thing uh, so just uh, i will take the questions in the end uh, if you have any individual questions you can actually mail me out i just wanted to ensure that so we will talk about that in the end or regarding your personal queries if you have any per- queries very persistent to you particularly specific questions so dress appropriately part guys we have to wear blazer suits Uh, so you don't need to wear a suit or blazer it's not a mandatory thing but make sure that if you're not wearing it you are prepared for the fact that you see people there waiting in a high five suit and thing so you don't need to get stressed out at that point i just want to ensure that so be prepared that there are people who would be definitely going in suit and blazer so there's nothing wrong if you wear or if you do not wear it's fine girls western formal wear or salwar kameez so it's up to you uh, then majority do again go with the western formal wear and girls then we talk about shoes polish them properly nails hair cut it short I and mean for the guys hair cut it short nails uh, ensure that you have proper well, it's clean and neat for guys and girls i would preferably suggest girls should not uh, go near the nail polish for next few days if you can stop yourself that's good for all of you and again do not uh, wear the jewelry so minimal jewelry is highly appreciated for girls and make sure that your clothes are properly ironed and like the guys have shaved etc so the thing which i would like to say here is it is you who is going to set an, an interview gd and vat and go, undergo stress and like to like you are already in tension tense mode and like you will be stressed even more so please ensure that your dress do not actually add up to your stress and your uncomfortableness wearing it so please ensure that you wear something which you are happy wearing it it might mo- not make you look uh, handsome or beautiful that's not the point at that particular day the day w- w- at the d day for this mba interviews is to make sure that you show to the panel that you are a worthy candidate of being in a b school so that th- there are other days where you to wear you can actually wear your jewelry and other dress and stuff so i hope you understood then we'll move ahead and say like stay confident so that you have to ensure you have to show it to the panelists through your body language beat hand shake good eye contact and stuff uh voice and smile ensure that you have smile on your face that is going to be a good asset for all the people all the i would say it like the like, smile is something which can actually create a pleasant atmosphere over there in the interview room so you keep smiling in a controlled manner it's not like you're laughing or something i uh, just maintain a good smile that would definitely go well with the panel uh voice so you should show your confident uh, that you are confident through your voice so every word you speak will show that so and then listen to what panel is saying and ask for the clarification if you don't get it so wh- what i'm saying is uh, the panel could be asking you stressing you out and you are under some stress and you might have missed you might miss what the panel is asking and if you do not get the question correctly there is very 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 less chance that you will answer it correctly irrespect of how easy it is the how easy the question is even if if he ask you what is your father my you might not hear it properly and say what is your father's name you might say your father's name rather than what your father actually is profession of your father so like you can potentially screw it up even in a very simple way simple things so listen to what the panel is saying and ask for the clarification if you do not get it so if he is talking about something and you are not understanding it properly just ask him sir please can you repeat it i uh, like sir i i couldn't understand it can you so it's fine that uh, you admit that you do not get the point that's slightly better than actually just behaving as if like you understood everything despite you not getting the question and you trying to answer and going completely in the opposite direction uh, so that's not a good thing anyway so then address your interviewer by title sir or madam so you never know how they react uh, so this make sure that you are on the safe side by just addressing them sir or madam 
explain your answers with reasoning and example this is the fundamental logic which i have been explaining you right from the start anything you speak anything you write anything you do in the gd vat and pi process you should be able to justify with some reasoning and examples so basically they are looking at your logical capabilities and analytical abilities and then be precise in wording so make sure that uh, you do not actually beat around the bush and actually use too many words to actually explain a thing so that would not go well so just make sure that you get a right balance between explaining things with examples and reasoning but at the same time very precisely so do not make excuses related to your past the thing is like when you go about and talk about your past you would say sir at that time something has happened my friend has done something my colleague has done like this or maybe the situation was not favoring or something like that so please do not make excuses if you i have done something wrong just admit that that has happened because i was like not mature or something like it's fine you just agree that sir but i have rectified it and i have actually improved and i am making sure that that doesn't happen like being a guy a girl like who looks like ex- like takes excuses a lot will not go well and then do not make negative comments on your organization colleagues or manager yes sir my manager is like very bad person like he give me one hell of a time and like my colleagues are not very friendly i am not able to work over there uh, they are not a good team players so organization like just don't go on doing these kind of things in an interview even if an interviewer probes you like to make you talk something like that make sure that you talk at least neutral or like maybe slightly positive even if you do not like them just for the sake of an interview you just say that even i would say personally in life you should not be talking in that manner but at least in an interview just make ensure that you do not do these things do not look like you are just complaining complaining and complaining so that will not go well then do not give the impression to the panel that you are not interested in this admission do not sound as if like ah uh, if not this i'll like uh, like it's good to say that if they ask you that you have some backups but do not sound as if like there is nothing for me if i do not even make it uh, i am not losing anything do not talk something like that but i just say that sir i don't know what i want to do i just uh, appeared it i cracked it so i'm just sitting in the interview so i don't know what i want to do in my life so these kind of things would not go well and there is no chance that the panel would take you in if you are not interested in getting in school because there are people waiting outside who are so working so hard and very much interested to get into the schools be prepared for standard questions i will just show you some standard questions so be prepared for these set of questions um but do not speak in such a way that it is evident that you have prepared for that standard questions say tell me about yourself do not just talk in the blabber out in front of them which makes them feel understand that you are actually prepared or by hearted it's like my name is this this i have done that i have done this uh, i have done that just don't go in that manner just give a good passes ensure that it looks like you are actually talking it out of your heart or there rather than actually so for that you have to make preparation in this manner do not write down each and every line what you are going to speak over there rather than that write down a uh, keywords key points it's like first of your name next location like where i am from and then maybe your grad uh, where you did your grad in something like grad comma something like that and work experience 10 months from there so that would give you a structure in which you have to speak the words and prepositions and other stuff you can actually pick it from there there's nothing wrong in that so yeah finally which i would like to say is please understand that panelists are also human they are not some demons or like uh, some aliens who are just trying to eat you or like just try as psychos who are just trying to stress you out they are just making sure that you people are fit enough for being part of a b school so they are just trying to ensure that they might shout at you they might say that you are useless you are like you are you're just pointless you are like there is no point of you and you being leaving so they might go to that extent they might shout at you they might stand and look as if like uh, very much pissed off with you and stuff like that but don't worry about that they are just trying to stress you out more and more and more to ensure you to see where you will break so everyone will break down i'm not saying that but i'm saying don't break down so easily please try to understand that point that these people are just trying to just stress you out so be cool it's fine they're just putting up a show over there so just don't worry too much about that even if he's saying that you are useless you are worthless he might personally feel that you are personally very good as like you are academic wise you are talented and everything he's just trying to stress you out but so do do understand that do believe in yourself they're just trying to stress you out there's nothing wrong in if they say that you are useless and worthless you still stay confident even i would say in life someone says that you are useless it's fine maybe he might find you useless but there are millions of people who are waiting out and they will obviously appreciate your talent so don't worry about that point so i would say in interview do not like given to interview panelists and just 
cried. There are people where they have cried. Uh, stress interviews are one thing which generally happens, and people do come out of it crying or like they give up in the middle. Like it goes to that extent that he shouts, shouts, and shouts in the middle, and he asks very tough questions. People will not answer the questions properly, sir. I would say, sir, I don't know, sir, I don't know. And it goes to an extent. Uh, finally, say they ask you like, what is your father's name? And they say, sir, I don't know, because they are not thinking. Like they have given it up in the mind. Like they are uh, think, still thinking about the questions which they couldn't answer. And the, sh- the guy shouting at them, you're useless and worthless. He feels that okay, you know, I have messed this up. What should I do? So he's not focusing on that. So please make sure that you do not do that part. So stay. Uh, what I'm saying is like stay strong. Don't worry about that part. Let them scold. It's fine. They know it. It's not that you're useless. They appreciate you, but just that they're just trying to stress you out. So I'm stressing this point so much because this is the key thing which would actually help you out in an interview. Uh, then I'll just show some example questions which could potentially be asked in an interview. So these are some standard set of questions. So tell me about yourself. Maybe one minute, two minutes. Sometimes they'll ask, "Tell me about yourself in two lines," or maybe tell me about yourself, which is not written in the form. So generally, all the B schools do ask you to submit some form. So they might ask you to like, tell me about yourself, which is not written in the form. So I've read the form. I know a good amount of uh, you, but tell me what do I know? What should I know about you, which is not written in the form? So generally, if you have not written the strengths or weaknesses or anything in your form, talk about that your achievements in life. But if you have even filled those aspects. We have to be prepared for something else. So make sure that for the whatever the B school you are attending, what have you written in the form, and so what are the new things you can actually speak in an interview when this question is asked. So your biggest achievements and failures in life. What did you learn from your failures? So strengths and weaknesses. So uh, achievements and failures in life, and what did you learn from your failures? Uh, what I would like to say is, do not say that, sir. I do not have any failures. Like you know, I I went fail in life. So this is what a prof actually said to me that see there's a theory which I do not remember the name. It just says that uh, uh, if if a failure doesn't happen, it has to happen at some point of time in in the world in this world. So if you haven't failed till that point, it means that there's a very high probability that you will fail ahead somewhere because you haven't failed till now. There's a good chance that you will fail in some time in, in the future. So uh, potentially, why should a employer actually hire you? Because see, there's a good chance that you'll make a mistake when you are under him. Rather than a person who has actually worked and somewhere and he had made mistakes, so the potentially probability of him is making a mistake is less. It's just it's not a very logical argument, but what I'm trying to say is, so please make sure that you do not say that sir, I haven't done a mistake in my life. I haven't lost a, like there has never been a failure. I am completely successful guy. So please do not do that. Just dive deep into your life. You will get some good examples. Maybe small ones. It might not be might not look like a big failure for others. But please make sure that you have some enough ones in your pocket to actually talk about in an interview, and give an example as well to that. So achievements part, obviously, I think everyone would have some examples. So just talk about that, be it in your college or academic part, or some extra cultural activities, or maybe in your work, or anything achievements you got, some awards or something, scholarships or maybe you have cracked any exams and stuff like that. So strengths and weaknesses part, strengths I don't need to talk about that. But weaknesses, I would like to uh, just make sure that you understand two to three points. Number one, please do not give silly examples for your weaknesses. Be like, sir, I watch TV a lot, or I eat food a lot. I am a food lover, so I am a foodie, so I eat a, a lot of food. So these chocolates, I eat chocolates a lot. Something like this. These are the silly things. Please do not give these kind of things. So next kind of thing is do not say like. Uh, Showing positives in a negative manner to just ensure that you're not putting really a weakness. Like I work too hard. Uh, it's like I am too uh, detail like oriented to attention. Like uh, the attention to detail is my weakness. Where like I focus a lot onto this. So in a way, you're actually trying to show your strengths and a weakness. Uh, so that is a very very old strategy which will not work anymore. Uh, panelists would just laugh at it and like leave it. So I would rather say that really look at some of your weaknesses. And pick it up, but at the same time ensure that you do not actually put your weaknesses. Be it like I am very lazy, which would not go well. Like, ah, sir, I am very weak. Like you can say that maybe, sir, I do not have one example. I will just try to give. It should be individualistic. So please understand that uh, whatever I am saying, as uh, just some examples, you should actually get things out of your life. That's where you can actually justify an interview rather than if someone gives you some idea and like you just go and say the same thing. It might not work well for you. So you have to make sure that the things which fit you. As a person, so like, uh, 
the example could be that sir i am like not able to give actually constructive feedback to someone on their face and negative feedback i would rather say so if you are working on a team he did something which is not of good quality but you want to comment on that but you are not able to just because of the reason that you feel that he might not take it positively so you have some fear somewhere so yes it's an inability of you to actually give a negative feedback on someone's face which would obviously lead to a suboptimal result when you're working on a group so which is slightly an acceptable weakness so sir i'm working on it so i'm working on it and i'm trying to actually improve upon it and i'm giving feedback to my colleagues or maybe group projects which is done in the college and stuff like that so you can say i hope i would be able to do it properly in coming days so yeah the second question would be what are you doing to cover your weaknesses so you should talk about that in your weakness part the example which i'm saying so never ever say if even you ask only weakness just do not say your weakness and leave it just talk one two lines more about saying that i am trying to improve i have done something and i am have improved or i am trying to improve at least say that you are trying to improve then questions related to your work profile so what do you do in your job what are the skills you have learned what is your take away from your work experience till now i may be internship you have worked till now but you have done some internship the question comes then why mba so it seems like your work profile is good and maybe you are like looking like you are loving your job or something like that so you can say no sir i don't love my job so i know i am not loving my job or i don't like what uh, so that's why i'm shifting so that shouldn't be an answer uh, it should maybe maybe you can give it if you are very confident that you can justify that i don't know how one can justify that but i personally feel it's a very risky bet if someone is willing to take it's up to them personally but i personally suggest to show that uh, you actually need an mba to grow in your career if you have already worked maybe you feel that or maybe that you learned that uh, the management is your cup of tea after joining an engineering or some undergrad where you have actually uh, worked in team to be organizing committees of some festival or something where you worked in a team you like you felt that you have good leadership skills or something for that you need to again justify some examples like what you have done in the past to show that you have done something which made you realize that you are fit for an mba then a uh, future goals short term and long term so what are your short term goals like after an mba 2 to 3 years what are you planning to do so what do you plan to actually get from an mba and stuff like that long term goals are something like 10 15 20 years maybe you can talk about uh, being a ceo of a company or maybe you want to be an entrepreneur something like that so it's up to you to decide like so everything obviously you have to justify it it should go so i would say if it comes out of your heart rather than a well prepared answer i mean just an artificial answer Uh, if it comes out of your conviction and heart that would give you a best chance to convince the panel irrespective of how tough a question is like the pro- even if you probe your lot with further question you would be able to justify it uh learning from work ex- as what i was saying the key takeaways and skills you have learned from your work experience and stuff and then hobbies and interests so what are your hobbies interests so suppose you, your hobby is a favorite uh, like reading books so what is your favorite book so what did you learn from like what are the things you liked in the book like inspirational character in a book a favorite author or what do you like in him i mean in his writing stuff like that so sports people who love to watch sports they might ask you like okay why do you follow that uh, football cricket or maybe a club or maybe a team so what do you like i am fan of sachin or ms dhoni so they might ask you who is an inspirational person in your life so you might relate it to your hobbies maybe if he is a musician or maybe a cricketer like sachin or maybe messi ronaldo or anyone so it's up to you or maybe even a personal family member like your father who stood by your family or maybe your mother maybe your grandparents your uncle anyone a friend even a friend who you like really get inspired so th- what i'm trying to say is like when these side kind of questions are asked if, rather than a well made answer if the answer actually comes out of your heart you will be actually speaking with conviction over there your eyes your face your expression everything would actually make the panel feel that this guy is really meaning it he is not just making it up so that would definitely come because it's coming out of your heart so then the questions could be on your family like what is your father mother brother and like what are they doing something like that the profession of your father the company in which he worked in then the positions of responsibilities you have taken in college maybe your placement committee or organizing committee of your festival secretary president anything like that so they'll ask you what did you learn or what did you do or this and something related to that so moving ahead i'll just show you the outliers kind of thing the tough ones which would i would say the intention of like showing these questions is not to actually create fear or something but these are real life real questions which have been asked in iims and other b school interviews and it happens very frequently 
it's not as if like there these were the only four five questions which have occurred in past 20 or 30 years these are the ones which have occurred in hardly some 10 15 interviews and in, uh, last year uh, last two years something like some examples where i've looked and taken them from so they might ask you when did battle of plassey take place so the answer is i think 1750 57 57 if i'm not wrong uh 1575 and this country so the point is uh to be very frank uh, i don't think that battle of plassey has anything to do with you being an mba grad in future or even an mba student so why exactly are they asking this question so like what is the intention behind it so does it really make you a good fit for an mba if you are a guy who is interested in history might or might not be so that's not what they are looking at so even if you do not answer it the way you go ahead in an interview is something which matters for them so they will ask you these tough, tough questions it's good if you answer it and i agree that there are some questions which they ask you and expect you to know like for example they might ask you what are the seven states in north eastern the seven sister states in north north india north eastern india and i can assure you majority of people actually cannot answer it and i can assure you people even who answer that if they are asked the questions related to capital of it uh, mostly would most of them would again would not be able to answer it so these kind of questions i would say they might not take it well so you have to be prepared for that but again questions like battle of plassey uh, this question are you fan of any sports you might say that just like cricket or football so they might say dimensions of a cricket ball a pitch a length of a wicket or maybe the bat or maybe the pitch length and maybe the width and uh, the dimensions of that a football pitch the weight of the football the diameter or radius of a football and then that uh, that that height and the width of a goal post and then the length of a d line i mean what's the area of a d line so anything could be asked like you you never know it so again these kind of questions are very common for sport people the worst thing that can happen is they might even ask you something like what are the runs like the total runs scored by sachin tendulkar in his first class career a total wicket number of wickets taken by shane warne in his first class career not in an international career it's first class career so it's something which not I think most of the people do not know the answer. Who are sitting there, uh, even maybe the panelists do not know it. They'll just ask it. It's fine. Like, so even they might ask you if you go from Mumbai to New York, what are the sea bodies by which you will be flying? So this is the question which has appeared in an IMA interview. So it might. So here you need to have some idea about the world map. So you need to know like if you go from Bombay to New York, maybe you can say that if I use Lufthansa Airlines, maybe I'll go to Frankfurt there and then from there to New York. So what are the, what is the route and what are the sea bodies uh, you will be actually touching upon? So for that uh, you would be able to answer it if you have some good idea about the world map, the oceans and stuff and other countries which are there. So uh, these are the questions which are like very way outward. But again, they could ask you questions on integral calculus, probability, which you have done in your school, tenth, ninth, eleventh, and twelfth. Calculus is like eleventh and twelfth stuff, but differential calculus again eleventh and twelfth. Maybe they can ask you basic stats and probability which you have done ninth and tenth. are high level ones which you could have done in 11th and 12th maybe you can also face questions from physics chemistry biology social sciences like history geography civics they can ask you even to list out the seven fundamental rights so you fundamental rights in the country so you never know what they lack so so i'm just trying to say that you can prepare for everything but you should be like trying to do your best in whatever the time you have and make sure that you prepare well enough for a different kind of thing So first, you should be well prepared within your uh, limits, like your personal life, your career-related stuff, and then the recent happenings would be the next level. The third level would be something like your uh, bachelor of history, geography, and stuff. But your school studies, I would say, you should be in your second level of preparation, like calculus, probability, which you would have done, and there's a very, very good chance that they ask you this calculus and probability. The quant-based questions, the math questions, are very common for engineers. They can ask you functions, draw the graph of function. They can ask you these questions, so you should be prepared for that. So first thing that they can pick some course from your engineering. Uh, if people have done an optimization and operation research based on inventory management and stuff, uh, they might as well ask these questions. If the panelist on the other side is from a quant or operations department, you never know what they'll ask you. So this is from my side. Uh, so we'll just have a small Q and A session. So if you people have any doubts, so I'll take it for another 10-15 minutes and I'll try to clear all your doubts. Then, if you still have any doubts, uh, you have I just show you the like, multiple ways. You have a Facebook page. I hope everyone will like you. Will would have already liked it. If not, please like it. It would obviously help you because we will be updating quite a few things in the coming days, which would definitely help you in your preparation and future webinars and other things 
which we are trying to launch would definitely be there. So we will know all the updates. Our we follow on Twitter. We have our own website BDU, which is not done yet. It's a beta version. But we have the contact page working where you can actually write write to us your questions. Even in Facebook, you post your questions. So and again, we have our own mail ID. I just uh, type it out in the chat so you can also mail to us your personal questions. Yeah. So yeah. So from this, uh, I'll be starting to take the questions. So I'll first start with this. In I am B interview. If the interviewer asks me if I get I am A and I am B, which one will I choose? So what should I answer? So I would say like this is a very tricky thing. I agree to you. So this is a very good chance that the I am will ask you. Uh, this is slightly tougher one if you ask me. There's a I have heard quite a few cases where the people are asked when they attend I am Lucknow or I am Kozhi code interview. I am inter and ask what are the other calls we have and so like okay so we have A B C and L. So you are sitting in an L. So okay, so we, if you make it to A or B or C, so you will be going to that, right? So why should we take you here? So that's the question. In a in a similar question which they asked. So then you should not say, please do not ensure that you will not say that no, no, sir, uh, I am Lucknow is one which I'll choose or A B C because L has something. You might talk about a good campus, a good faculty, and something like that. I've read this or that. So see which will sound very funny for them. Is a good chance they themselves could be people who have done PhD or uh, fellowship from I M A B C, uh, so they might they themselves know which I M S are better than which. So A B C will definitely are ahead of L. So there I would say even for this question, if you go for A R B, I would say first try to answer in a very diplomatic manner. So first go ahead and say, sir, uh, I am trying my best to get into top B schools, so be it I M A R B. So I am preparing for that. So I am attending the interviews. So I am confident. So I am still waiting for the results. So the results haven't come yet. So you are still attending the interviews. After cracking the interview, and as you said, if I am very lucky, by God's grace, if I could make it to both A and B, ah, uh, they are very close options. I have heard till now. I have talked to quite a few students and alumni. From what I could understand, both A and B are on a very similar level. So I am still haven't ah uh, finalized my decision. After getting into, if I could convert both the colleges, I would again consult few more people. And I would try to take an informed decision. So as of now, I am happy. I would be very happy to get into either of this. So this is a better answer. Like I would say, you have to stay diplomat. You do not claim that is valid for any of the IIMs or other B schools. The, the, the point which I am trying to say is, if you are attending a B school and you have calls from a, a slightly higher ranked B schools, so there is a good chance chance that the panel asks you. Do not be stupid enough to say that no, sir, I don't have any other calls. This is the best call I have. So please do not do those kind of things. If a, by any chance the panel actually go about uh, and look into the other calls you got, there's a good chance that you might or they, they might find that you already got the other calls and they're hiding it. So please ensure that you say the truth and say that sir, as of now I haven't decided. I would be happy if I get into either of this. So then after getting into, if I convert, then I will see where I have to join. That would be fairly good enough for me. Uh, then uh, the the question on GD, like please tell us about the right way of cutting and grabbing a chance to speak. Because there is no way for a person to know when the current person might stop talking. Also, how to handle when someone cuts you while you are still making a point. So, uh, there I would suggest there are two ways to do this chance to speak part. I mean, uh, I agree to your point. I um, most of the students, all the students will face the issue like when should I grab the chance? But it's an ability of you to actually pick up and grab the chance. So you have to follow the person when he is speaking. Be ready with your point in your mind. At least first five six words, you be ready with that. Ah, uh, what you want to speak, okay. And so when he is giving a pass, and it looks like you should be listening to his point. Obviously, when you feel that okay, the point is coming to an end, maybe he actually wants to speak two three lines more. But when he gives a pass, just jump in and talk. Even if he is talking, you also talk two three more words. If that guy is still not stopping, then okay, you give him chance because he is still speaking, so you should not cut him down. So even you both are speaking simultaneously, but okay, give him chance because he is speaking. Obviously, he has been continuing. But assume that he has passed, and along with you, there is someone else who is started simultaneously. So if you feel that you haven't got enough chance to speak, so do not uh, stop yourself. Continue with six, seven words more. If that guy is not stopping himself, then you stop yourself. Uh, if you both talk continuously, then that that would obviously lead to chaos. So I would say take some chance. You speak six seven words. Even if someone is speaking, wait, hoping that he will stop himself. Even if he is doing the same logic of not stopping himself, then you stop. No problem. 
because if you both peak that would be negative for both so that is something which i would suggest and other thing which i have seen which i find the decent strategy i would say is uh suppose you want to say i feel that otherwise you, you want to say that i think this so you can say i think i think i think i see people like repeating the same words if someone else is also speaking simultaneously the other guy will shut down because uh here you don't have anything to speak you will just i think i think i think you will just repeat it the other guy would stop himself and then you can continue the line but i am not i don't suggest you to go with this method rather than that take the first manner like you you follow the person who is speaking and once you feel that that guy stopped you pitch in your point so for that you need to have your the first three four words in your mind uh, ready so that it, it will come unconsciously then if he is still continuing the point uh, he says that i want to then okay just give him chance if someone else is speaking so do not stop yourself and continue if both the people are talking simultaneously even after seven eight words i would say you stop it no problem but if, if this is happening continuously and if you are not able to speak then i think you have to take a risk obviously rather than not talking maybe you have to talk and try to cut down others uh, so that something see i would suggest you have to be a bit i have to change your strategy depending on how your group behave i have participated in various group discussions where the groups are very com- well, uh, giving chance to others or accommodating and like there are other times there are people where two three people who actually uh, show their arrogance like when both of them are simultaneously speaking is a see let me complete it so this is not something which you should do you should not okay if you are speaking and someone is cutting then you do this as you said how to handle when someone cuts you while you are still making a point you just say that uh hello uh, let me complete my point and then you can talk about yours and then you continue your point so when you are still speaking and is cutting down then you say that excuse me i i haven't done my point so please let me complete my point and then you can continue with yours and then you go ahead there's nothing wrong in doing that that's fairly a good way of uh, doing if someone is cutting you down so then how would you handle a question like do you have any questions for us so what i would say is uh there there are three things i mean i would say three uh, ext- uh, i would say three zones where you can land one you can say sir i don't have any questions thank you a lot so this is uh, okay the other one is like you say this yes i have and asking a very stupid question just for the sake of asking that maybe there's a very good chance potentially that you're screwing your like interview would have gone really good till that point just because you have asked some really stupid question it could actually affect you in any two so you never know and then the third one is asking a very good not a very good i would say it's a decent question so you have used your chance that's really good one i would suggest you try the last one like asking a decent question so how would i ask that so depending on the college you are going do a proper research on that you can ask questions based on the research activities that are happening so even though it's not an engineering college they also do have this papers and other stuff is they do happen so phds of the profs you can go through that and maybe you can ask something on that maybe it's a slightly tricky rather than that pick on something like the foreign exchange options we have so most of the b schools ask, give you a chance to actually have an exchange program with foreign b schools and do it so you can ask sir how useful is that so what i have seen the partner institutions they look to be good so how useful is that or how many students do go to do the, the foreign exposure uh, is the component really good something like that so which actually might not be helpful for you to know it i mean if you get to a school then you have many sources to understand that part whether the foreign exposure is valid is good or not whether you would want to go with foreign exchange or not but the, the point what i'm trying to make is that shows the panel that you are interested in the college you have you are fairly knowledge about the college the activities that happen in the college maybe you can talk about the clubs or departments sir i am interested in this part so how active is this club like uh, what activities i have seen this activity something like that so this would show that you are interested in that and we are giving the panel not a very serious question which would affect your potential candidates these are the questions which are like completely outside your your interview based thing so it's not related to your candidate or your personal profile or anything so it's just something you are asking to know more information so which i would suggest would show that you are interested at the same time uh, we have asked the question just for sake because the panel has asked so you have asked so that's fairly good so i think it answers your question so uh, any more questions so uh, it's fine like you have if you want to ask any questions you can ask it over here if not as i have said the sources be it on facebook be it on twitter you can follow us on twitter maybe you can use our website and directly mail it to us uh, from the contact us page uh, you'll or maybe you can directly mail to us at the contact us the page which have been contact us at the redbtq.com so 
I hope uh, this session has been very helpful for you people. So, so I'm assuming that there are no questions, there are no more questions. So I'll just go with this point. I agree that already 12:30 and your people would have been tired. It's very late in the night, but you would get adjusted once you get into B school. That's a very common time over here, over in a B school. So what I'm trying to say is, yeah. So I hope this session would help, would have definitely helped, would help you in preparation. So you'll, you can go ahead and use this. to prepare well for your uh, gdpa process and we will be subsequently launching a uh, few more uh, preparatory material and sessions which would some videos and maybe few more webinars which we are planning so depending on uh, the response we get and the feedback we get we'll go uh, ahead with the different ideas so again i hope you didn't have too much of technical issues with this so we are still trying to figure out uh, the, the options we have in technology aspect so Yes, uh, I really appreciate uh, you people attending this session and like taking your time. Obviously, it would have definitely helped you. And please take some more time to actually uh, give a feedback. Even if you didn't like this, if you felt that like the whole session has been a waste of your one and a half year time of your hour of your life, I would ask you to just spend two more minutes and just say that I didn't like this at all and explain it with two three lines. As I said, again use the same logic. Explain it with me examples and some data. Not data, actually examples to reasoning to show that show why you didn't like it. So that would definitely help us to improve, and we will do much better in subsequent things. So we have quite a few things in our in plan. So we want to launch a mock interview program, so which would be done one on one, which would definitely help you out to do better in your uh, interviews. We are planning to launch some the current affairs materials, which would definitely help you to do better. So all these updates, everything would be updated in the website and obviously in the Facebook. so people who are follow and like we do contact you as well so we'll be getting those so i hope you all like the session so as i said i will agree with, again request you please give the feedback if you can which would help us to improve so even if you say hi i liked it or hi i didn't like it give it some two three lines of uh, explanation and i would be very happy to actually do it and again if you have any personal queries please write to us in any of these media we will definitely try to get back and help you out in your uh, process so thanks a lot so good night so i am ending the session